My name is Riley Gaines. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Kentucky where I was on the women's swim team. I proudly finished my career as a 12-time NCAA All-American, a five-time SEC champion. Um, I am one of the fastest 200 butterflyers uh, of all time. Um, but on March 17th of last year, my teammates and I were, and other female swimmers from universities around the country were forced to compete against a biological male named Leah Thomas. Um, Thomas was allowed to compete in the women's division after competing as a member of the University of Pennsylvania's men's swim team for three years. We watched on the side of the pool as Thomas won a national title in the 500 yard freestyle, beating out the most impressive and accomplished female athletes in the country, including Olympians and American record holders. Whereas just the year before, Thomas at best was ranking in the 400s in the men's category. The next day, Thomas and I raced in the 200 freestyle, which ended up in a tie. Um, we went the exact same time down to the hundredth of a second. Having only one trophy, the NCAA told me that I would go home empty handed and this trophy would go to Thomas. And when I questioned this, the NCAA told me that Thomas had to hold it for photo purposes. I was shocked. I felt betrayed and belittled, reduced to a photo op. But my feelings didn't matter. What mattered to the NCAA were the feelings of a biological male. In 1972, Congress enacted Title IX to end unjust sex discrimination in all aspects of education, including college athletics. But by allowing Thomas to displace female athletes in the pool and on the podium, the NCAA intentionally and explicitly discriminated on the basis of sex. Although the NCAA claimed it acted in the name of inclusion, its policies in, in fact excluded female athletes. But that is not all. In addition to being forced to give up our awards, our titles, not opportunities, the NCAA forced female swimmers to share a locker room with Thomas, a 6'4", 22-year-old male who was fully intact with male genitalia. Let me be clear. We were not forewarned. We were not asked for our consent, and we did not give our consent. If nothing else, I hope you can truly see how this is a violation of our privacy and how some of us have felt uncomfortable, awkward, um, embarrassed, and even traumatized by this experience. I know I don't speak for everyone. I, it's impossible to speak for everyone, but I can attest to the tears that were shed on that pool deck by these poor ninth and 17th place finishers who missed out on being named an All-American by one place. And I can attest to the extreme discomfort in the locker room when you turn around and there's a male watching you undress while exposing himself I can attest to the anger and frustration from these girls who had worked so hard and sacrificed so much to get to this point. Unfortunately, our experiences are not unique. The number of female athletes who have been denied opportunities, again, traumatized or hurt by policies that claim to be promoting inclusion is growing at an alarming rate around this country. It's simply unacceptable and the integrity of women's sports is lost. Thank you. Thanks so much.